Hello, welcome back. So um, this is where we left off with our code. Um, yes, after writing the neck, um, we are here today to write the drivers for the um, for the limbs module. So just like you did before, just um, copy, um, just create another version of the code by just copying and pasting the folder of the code of the project, and then renaming the folder so that you continue for the from the new folder. This helps with revision, right? So once you've done that, you just open that new folder. You can rename it to uh, Vixen with Neck implemented, or you can give it whatever name that will make it um, easier for you to remember. Anyway, once you are done with that, just come over here and then we continue from here. So what we're going to do for the um, for the limbs module is to write the drivers in assembly, and we're going to write the um, the implementation. All the implementation function in assembly what I mean by this is you realize that in the head module we just initialize the head in, a, in assembly and then we wrote the other part of the code the functions that controls the head we wrote in C this time we're going to write everything in assembly the functions that control the limbs we're going to write in assembly as well and export these functions to make callable by the central module so let's start by creating a new source group um, right to um, to contain the files we'll be writing so I'll right click here add group and I'm going to call this um, the limbs yeah and within this group I'm going to create three files I'm going to create the C file we're going to have one C file just to you know you'll see what we use it for don't worry and I'm just gonna call this limbs and I'll create the um, the assembly file as well. Right click at new item dot h file um, dot s file limbs. And then finally we create the header file. Right click at new item dot h and then limbs. So um so you just go and and add the the header file to your project. Remember we double click, we double click here. And then we can find it over here, limbs.h. Just add it. And then we click down here to close. Now we can find that it exists as part of our project, limbs.h. Here it is. So um, let's just get cracking here. Yeah? We start with the .s file because that's where almost everything is. So we're going to call this limbs.s. And um, basically, we can give a small description of what it does. And I'll just copy and paste over here. Function to initialize motor pins. Okay, that's descriptive enough. And then next, we could just give the pin out of the motor pins. And actually, that reminds me, we forgot to update our pinout file. Remember, we've got the docs file where we keep the pinout. So we have this. We've not added the neck pin yet. So we could just come here and then we just call it um we just say the server pin and do you remember which pin it is? Um we could just verify. So we've not added a server pin and we've not added motor one. We've, we're working with the motors now, so we can just type them here. Motor two, I think motor one is PE2. We've got PE2 and then we've got PE3. E3, I see. And I'm looking at other remarks. These are output pins. And this is an output. And this is an output as well. So the next thing is before we go quickly to the um, the assembly file of the limbs, let's locate the pinout of the server. We do that by coming to the neck module here. And we could come here, it should be here. Did we define it? We didn't define it over here. So it should be somewhere here. Let's see, it is PF3. Okay. Um, so let's just go to our pin connections text file and then PF3. And that's an output pin as well. And you can see the remarks we put here actually matches the arrow direction of the data flow graph. Uh, we drew uh, the be we drew at the beginning of the um of the course. <laughs> actually type connection. Should be typing output um, right so um, yeah we have it all nice 
and now we can go back to our lims.s file to populate it. So we said motor 1 is connected to PE2, motor 2 is connected to PE3. So basically the way we are going to um, write the code in order to be able to, um, to meet the requirements stated in the requirement document is to, um, to move forward for instance. We're going to turn on, we're going to apply a high signal to both motor 1 and motor 2 so the robot would move forward and straight forward. So to turn left what we would do is turn off one motor and then just one motor will be moving forward and because we have the caster, the swivel, the caster makes it easy for you know the robot to turn towards the direction of the motor that is turned off, remember, right? So we're going to turn one motor off, then we turn right, and then we turn the other motor off and turn the one that was turned off on in order to, you know, turn the other direction. And we're going to implement that in the code and when we try it out, you would see how it works. So basically, that is how we are going to design the differential steering. Remember, we have the caster. The caster is a passive, um, a passive wheel. We don't apply power to it. But because the wheels at the back have power and it's, it's being powered to move forward, the caster is able to just swing towards the direction directed by the wheels at the back. I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but um, you would see that when we run the experiment. And also, if you have further questions, just leave them in the comment section or just send me a message. Right, so we said we are using GPIO port E. So let's just get the um, the addresses of the various registers we need for this project. Let's start by adding here. We definitely need a data register. The data register is what is going to write the pin on or off. And we also need a direction register. The direction register we are going to use to set the pin as output. Right, then we use the digital enable register to set the pin as a digital pin. And over here, we're going to use the um, the drain. There's another register for drain. This register would allow us to increase the amount of current that the GPIO, you know, allows. Remember, there's a limit on the current the GPIO can provide. There's a default limit, and this is stated in the data sheet. In order to get more current, um, you can enable this register. This register enables it. I think this register here boosts the current to 8 amperes or 8 milliamps or something. I'm not quite sure. But um, you can verify from the data sheet. You can just go to the data sheet and verify. Just type DRAR like we did, like we've been searching um, items in the data sheet. Just go press Ctrl and F and then search DRAR. 8R and see what it says about that. That would be an excellent homework for you. So that's why we have this guy here to um, increase the current. So then of course we need the um, the system control RCGC register in order to provide clock access to port E. Right. So these are the um, the addresses we need. And remember, this is the actual address. That's just a symbolic name that we're going to use. This the EQU directive is used to provide this for us, we learned this, I'm glad. So we start by putting our our assembly directive, remember? Right, and I trust you understand what this line means, the entire thing, and then we tell the um, the assembler that we write and then thumb, remember? Right, so the next thing is um, to write the functions. So basically, we are going to create we're going to create about, hmm, how about, of course, we're going to have one function to initialize the motors. So we're going to have this function and we'll call it limbs init, right? So then we should create another function. How about we create one function to turn left, another function for turning right, another function for moving forward, and another function for stopping the robot. So we would end with about we end up with about five functions. Let's do that. Let's start with the um the first function, which is the function to initialize the robot, and we're going to call this limbs init. And um, basically, this function just yeah just initializes PE two and PE three. 
because that's where um, we're connecting the base pin of the of the BJT transistor and to do that um, okay how about I just pause for like three minutes and watch you as you write the um, the initialization code for this function yeah I'm watching you I know I'm not there but just think of it as a lab with supervision yeah so just pause the video and try your hands on this function then um, when you are done you can unpause and see whether you had it correct yeah right let's write it together right let's go step by step with it so first we um we enable clock access to um to the gpio port e and this is how we do it basically um yeah this this binary code this is wrong should be like this this clock access to um, GPIO port E 0 1 2 3 4 right A B C D E so hence we have this because remember we can summarize these four zeros to one zero and this zero 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 one it basically means one hence this so you understand this procedure already right right you point to the address then you load and then you perform the all operation then you store into the address once we have enabled clock access the next thing will be to um to set a direction register and to set gpio port e2 and e3 as output pins and um, we do that using this command here which we did when we were writing the driver for the light module as well as the head module right so this is the code this is the binary code and it becomes this in hexadecimal form right so this is five points basically if you got this right you just got five points if you got this right there's another five points for you um, let's see how many points you end up with We've got 20 points in total. Each code block is five points. So the next is to enable the um, the new register we've spoken about today, which is the um, DR8R register. And um, it's basically the same procedure. Remember, you want to enable it for both PE2 and PE3 because they both have the um, they both have motors connected to them. After that is done, you can digitally enable the GPIO port E pin 2 as well as pin 3 and um, there's just a DEN register like this and what's the last thing to do you have to return from the function right and we use the BXLR instruction to do that so this one here returns from the function for us right excellent so um, we've initialized both PE2 and PE3. The next thing is, um, let's write the next function. But before we forget, remember to make the function accessible to, um, to, uh, to programs or to files outside this particular file, we have to export the function, right? And remember this directive makes the function accessible in a C file. But even with this directive, if the function makes the code, this directive makes the code, the entire code, accessible in a C file. But even with this directive, if the function is not exported, it cannot be accessed. So what we have to do is use the export directive to make this function callable outside this particular file, because we're going to call this function in the central module. So we export limbs in it, we just wrote it. So the next function we're going to write is going to be um, the function to let the robot turn left. So basically we put it here, we just put it in the same file like this. And then we can just, so actually how about um, we continue in the next lesson. This video is getting a bit long. So I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll write the function to enable the robot to be able to turn left. See you.